Unmuted everyone, and if anyone has a question, I'd be happy to try and answer. I, I have been reading your book, then you are amazing that you remember every scenery of uh, every words Rudy said to you, every scenery, amazing. I really i am enjoying, slowly, but I'm enjoying. Uh, my uh, my question is, uh, uh, you talk about the blue world, blue world. Yes. What is that the blue world is? You, you understand? Uh -huh. Yeah, I, you know, look, back in the early 1970s, there was a teacher named Swami Muktananda who came to the United States. Yeah, I Rudy remember that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rudy brought him to the United States. I mean, everybody in his ashram chipped in money, and then Rudy matched, we raised about $30,000 wow. to bring him and his whole group of people to the United States. And when he was here, he talked about the blue world. It was part of his teachings. To be honest with you, I never quite comprehended it. Mm. I didn't care about blue worlds. I only cared about taking in the energy, the Shakti of teachers so that I could grow. Mm. So I never quite understood what it was about. Mm. And I did understand that there was a lot of Shakti around and I needed to grow and I needed to develop. I was a young kid. I mean, you know, I was, I don't know. I don't know, 28, 27 years old at the time, and I needed to grow. So I, I never, you know, Rudy told me, don't listen to the words, just take in the energy. Oh, I see. Told me that, just take in the energy. And if the energy will bring you to a blue world, it'll bring you there. If it'll bring you to things that you need to work through in your life, it'll take you there too. So I, you know, I, I don't have a definition for that. You know, it's obviously a place somewhere in the cosmos of supposedly very refined energy. And it was presented by, a, you know, this teacher who was there that Rudy brought to the United States. Sometimes I see like a bluish color, especially around you. Well, you know, look, it doesn't matter. Uh, Atsuko, what I learned later is that the color blue is a healing color. Ah. Understand, you know, in Tibetan Buddhism, they have medicine Buddhas and they're always painted blue, mm -hmm. you know, and it's the healing color. I often have worked in healing situations with people that have had cancer and all kinds of AIDS, all kinds of problems. And the color blue always manifested. Mm -hmm. And it was an aid in the healing of myself and other people. Uh, that's my only experience of blue in the, you know, in the evolution of consciousness, that it really is a profound and powerful healing color. Yeah. And uh, I discovered that when I was working with people and that energy would come through me, that blue, it really worked. It helped people a lot. It also helped me a lot. So if I have any, you know, grasp of the blue world, it probably is in that connection. I see. And, uh, Thank, you. Thank you so you're much. You're welcome. Excuse me? Yes? Um, I have a little bit of a hard time tuning out in my house. It's very loud. And I have a puppy, also very loud. And everybody's trying to be quiet. But between oh, the fissure, okay. my husband's talking. My son is here on vacation. <laughs> he's he's a, he's a COVID specialist, um, so he's like uh, exhausted when he comes home. You know, he doesn't live here. He lives in Crown Heights. So, um, I don't, I don't, who who's talking to me? I don't know. It's <laughs> Ruth. Who? It's Ruth Wenig. Oh, Ruth. Oh, okay. So, do you suggest maybe earbuds? Yes. <laughs> yes. Playing I suggest what? that. 
Unless you can tell people for a half hour to an they, hour. They, 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 are, they are really trying. They are really, really Ruth, trying. don't worry about it. This is just simply something you're going to have to work through in your life. And I promise you, in time, it will change. Okay. It will change. I'm you know, trying. I might go out to a cafe somewhere and just sit and take an iPod with you and do it. Yeah. You know? I mean it. It'll change. Just wear earplugs, you know? Yeah. I mean it. Or get strong enough to detach yourself from your husband, your son, from people, from the noise, the dog. You can get strong enough inside yourself. Sometimes that, grandchildren are here. It, it can be chaos. Yeah, well, I'm telling you, you can get strong enough in yourself to where you can detach yourself from all the distractions that are going on around you. I mean, when I had an ashram on Fourth Avenue in New York, it wasn't really an ashram, it was a, a, you know, a meditation center. I mean, we would have meditation and fire engines would go by, police sirens, people screaming in the streets. I lived on I, East Broadway, I know. I always, just, I always said to myself, Stuart, it's a test. Can you get detached from this? Can it be just background noise that doesn't interfere with your focus inside you? And that noise made me very strong. And I, I remember when I was studying with Rudy, I would go into the subways in rush hour and I would see if I could, I would, you know, sit, if I could do a meditation in the middle of all that. And I used all these things as a way of detaching myself from all of the disturbances that go on in the world. As you get stronger, Ruth, you've only been coming for about three or four classes now. You'll be able to detach yourself from the dog, your children, the husband, or whatever is going on around you. I'm going to, well, when the weather gets warmer, I'm going to go outside. Yeah. I have, I mean, I have a nice backyard. I can sit there. It'll all, it'll all work out, dear. Just keep working on yourself. I mean it. It'll all work out. Okay. Thank you. I mean, I, I know when I, I've written a dozen books, and every one of those books was written you know, sometimes in the middle of, you know, students and family and, <laughs> and I would sit at the computer. I was so focused. I didn't hear anybody. I read you know? several of them. And, I, and I'm telling you, I was so focused that nothing else existed except me and this book and the characters and people and things that were being created in front of me. And it's, this is the same thing. You will eventually get strong enough to where... Bombs can go off and it, it's not going to, you know, you'll be able to detach yourself from it. I've taken so many steps to even get here. I know. You know it's taken several that. years. And that's why I make a lot of room for you to come here and grow. I mean it. Okay. I mean it. Just keep working. All the rest of it will take care of itself. Okay. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? I have a question, Stuart. Yes. Um, so today, in one other time, I literally felt like I was going to fall over. Like, I, I, it was weird, like a very strong, and then I couldn't get my center, and I, so it, it threw me off. So can you just speak to that? Well, you said it, you know, it's just telling you that you need to work a little harder on yourself. So you get your center, and that kind of thing doesn't happen. Wendy, we're building you. Don't you understand that? You haven't arrived yet. <laughs> you really are. You're growing delightfully and beautifully. But there's always going to be things like that to remind you that you got to get a little more focused in yourself. And then you don't fall over. I mean, if I put my hand on your forehead, I promise you, you'll fall back. You know? I mean it. But uh, this... This other thing is just a matter of getting more focused. Because I do, you know, when I do retreats, I do hands-on healing. And people, I work with the spine and the, you know, head. And, and people always fall back. The energy is very, very strong. But it's very healing. And it transforms people inside themselves, inside. And I can't wait till this COVID thing is finished with so I can have a place where I can do this kind of stuff again. Wonderful. It'll be very wonderful. Mm. I have my daughter now. She, <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, this kid is like a miracle kid. 
And now she's finally come to a place in her soul where she says, Daddy, I have to meditate. And she comes and reminds me every day that we have to meditate together. And I love it. It's fantastic. I mean, she's, I mean really, it, it's amazing things. I, I made a commitment with her to spend a year, a year and a half with her and help her. The things that have taken place are beyond all my comprehension. It's so staggering what's taken place in her life. And now she says, I got to meditate. I have to meditate. And I'm just totally thrilled. You know, it's just, uh, it's been what a major working out of karma in such a profound way, you know? But after the class, I usually do a little hands-on healing work with her, touching her forehead, and, you know, the spine. Does anyone else have a question? Really yeah. Amazing, <laughs> amazing. Did you have a question? Uh, hi, Stuart. Hi. Um, as we live with uh, the realization that life is our teacher, um, how does that affect the impact of the choices we make in life as things unfold? Well, you know, look, Larry, it's teaching you to make conscious choices. Choices that, you know, and what I mean by conscious choices are choices that get you closer to your spiritual enlightenment. Choices that make you grow inside yourself. Sometimes they're difficult choices you have to make. Sometimes there are choices that are so far out of the range of what you think is spiritual, but it's something that you got to work through in order to get to the next stage of your life and not to be afraid to make those choices. Because if you make a mistake, I mean, it's just another way to learn, you know? It's another way to learn. So I think that it's all about making conscious choices and re recognizing that, you know, that uh, the world is there to teach you this. And then you don't reject life, you embrace life, you open to it, you become vulnerable to it, you let it come in. You're not afraid to be hurt by life. And then you make choices. You know, sometimes the choices that we have in our brain are not the right choices. We have to go a little deeper to find out what really we need at this moment to grow and develop our life. And that, that's the way I do it, you know? I mean, I, you know, just to get back to something, I don't understand any of this. You understand, I'm not a theologian, I'm not a philosopher, I'm not a, you know, I, I'm not even a, you know, a, a, a guru, for God's sake. I, I just do what I do, and I, and I try to let everything become experiential without having to understand it. And then as long as I'm capable of doing that, it all seems to work. The good, the bad, the indifferent, and the ugly, you know, it all seems to work. And it all seems to be just steps on a ladder that helps me to get beyond obstructions and blocks in myself so that I can embrace higher energy in the universe and to become a vehicle through which that energy flows. I mean, I, uh, I don't know how else to explain this, but I think that it's a very important thing to get to a place where you can make these kind of conscious choices. I mean, I've told you that story, you know, I'm in Texas, I built, I had ashrams I built all over Texas and it was always for Rudy, I never wanted these things. I mean, I always told Rudy, you have ashrams, you have prison programs, you have hospital, whatever you want, you wanna teach at university. I set up all these programs and it, and it was always, you know, for him, I would say, these are all yours. I used to tell him this. You know, so he comes out to Texas and I've been working, I don't know how many hours a day doing all this stuff. You're not working hard enough. What should I do, Rudy? Buy that building. <laughs> so I said, that, you know, I told you the story a million times. It was a shopping center. I said, Rudy, I have $600 in the bank. He said, anyone could do with money. You know, buying that building, which was the least 
thing I would ever have chosen to do for my spiritual life taught me how to get free of so many things on this planet that were blocking me from my growth, taught me how to stop being afraid of money, taught me how to stop being afraid of success. It taught me how to embrace, you know, the struggle to buy that building because I had to sit down every day and just ask God for the energy to do it. And I grew so much because of that. And it was the last choice I would have made in my own head about what I thought would help me with a spiritual life. And I grew by that building. <laughs> I need a shopping center. <laughs> and I'm telling you what it did. It just created something so profound in me and gave me a strength that I didn't have before. And then it went on to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing, you know, and each thing was a little bit bigger. But I learned how to go to higher energy in the universe to get what I needed in order to make these things work. And all of them were probably the last choices I would have ever made. You know, in terms of what I thought would help me grow spiritually. So I don't know the answer to that, Larry. I, all I know is, is you got to use everything to grow, everything in life. You have to use to grow. And sometimes you got to throw yourself in the middle of the ocean. And you got to really go to God to get the energy so you can swim to land. I've always done that with money and economics, you know? They've always been a way for me to get really strong in my life and to learn not to be afraid of those things. So they were no longer impediments to my growth. And then I gave it all up. Really, I left Texas and gave the whole thing away. Because I knew that if I spent another year there, my life would go nowhere. I had to go where I had a much bigger situation to deal with, which was New York. I mean, it's what Kala Rinpoche told me when I was in, I met him in India, you know, he said, I asked him if I should move, he said, you must go back to New York. If you go back to New York, your teachings will become known all over the world. That's what he told me. And I had known this man for two days, actually three hours, you know? <clears throat> And it's exactly what happened a year and a half later. I went to Europe and South America. And, you know, it was a much bigger situation, which I would have never conceived <coughs> in my own brain. But it forced me to grow. I had to grow like, oh, you know, in order to take care of these things that I had to take care of. So, you know, it's, it's, you know, everything. The only thing I can answer that everything works for you. If you use it to get to God, to get the energy, to be able to work with these different situations that manifest in life. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask?
K. So, you know, I mean, just to finish this up, you know, what I do today is a product of a lifetime of work, of having gone through so many situations that made so many demands on me. And the only answer I ever had for all of those situations was to go to God, a higher energy. I would go to Rudy, I would go to Nichananda, I would go and all the gurus that they were connected to, the teachers and the cosmos. And I mean, that's where I went to get the energy to do the things I had to do on the earth. And all of that became building blocks in this incredible pyramid that grew up. And everything I teach today and everything that comes through me today is a product of what I went through in my life. And I hope it continues to grow, you know, I really do. I, I just, I love it. I love it to grow, to expand. And now it's this Zoom thing that I'm doing, which is really getting pretty big. Does anyone else have a question they would like to? I think we are so lucky that you can write about Rudy's words and everything. So lucky to to uh, learn. Yeah, thank you so much. Atsuko, it's my favorite book. Good book about Rudy. Uh, but still, yes, very. Yeah. yeah, it was a book that took a long time to write, and I I knew I had to write it, and it's a very profound book, and it's my favorite of all. I have a you know a lot of books and. And that one, that story is really brings tears to my eyes every time I read it. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Somebody should make a movie of that story. It would be an incredible movie. <laughs> I think so. Really, really amazing. <laughs> but anyway, God bless you all. Thank you. And I There'll be class tomorrow evening. Uh, if you know people that want to come and study and learn this, I, yeah, I'm always open to new students. In fact, in the last three or four days, I've been getting a lot of new students and hopefully they'll start coming to the classes, you know. So bless you all. Thank you and all humility. Uh, keep working on yourself because I promise you it all comes. It all comes. So bless you and thank you. And hopefully I'll see everybody tomorrow night. So much. Thank you, Stuart. Bless you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.